I can. Nicole, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Nicole Johnson. I am the head official for NYO Games Alaska um, for the state uh, NYO Games. I've been doing this for, I don't know. My first NYO was 1982, and I've been to every games since then, with the exception, I think, of about three, either as an athlete coach official or head official. And I just um, found out my first year as head official was 2004. So 18, 18 years, but I started officiating in 2002 because I was coaching Nome in 2000 and 2001. Right after I moved here, I was still coaching, even though I was living here and they would come into town. Anyway, um, I'm here to help and answer any questions. Um, I love the sport. I love the idea behind these games. I just love everything about the games and um, whatever I can do to make this a better experience for you and for your kids. Um, I'm here to do that for you. Uh, and my name is Adele Villa. I'm the NYO coordinator. I've been involved with the games, um, working with the games for about 10 years now. Uh, 2012 was my first NYO. Um, I participated elementary competition, never really placed, but uh, I do have siblings and family that uh, did have successful careers in NYO. Um, I'm here as Nicole, here to help and support and encourage NYO in everyone's lives, especially our youth, our youngest ones, and um, <clears throat> happy to be here. Uh, Kyle, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. Hi, my name is Kyle Worrell. I've been coaching Team Juno, maybe going on five years, been an athlete about 13 years, um, and I live in Juno and I coordinate our Southeast traditional games event and I'm here today to help demonstrate. And we're so happy to have you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share our agenda with you guys. Um, pretty basic uh, Alaska high kick and kneel jump training. Um, we're gonna have Nicole and Kyle uh, provide some tips and, and uh, explanations on how the games work. We're gonna go ahead and cover Alaskan high kick and kneel jump review some video tutorials. Kyle will provide us a demonstration. We'll break some of it down and leave room for any questions that you guys may have. Um, I'll go ahead and start with our video tutorials for Alaskan High Kick. <clears throat> Nicole, would you, I, I'm gonna go ahead and share the senior NYO ones here first. I have a playlist here. Move this over so it's not covering anything. This is the Alaskan high kick. And now with two hands behind him. With one hand, he'll reach across and grab his opposite foot. His leg side just a little bit, and he can grab any part of his foot. From here, leaning back on his other hand, he'll take his other foot and plant it on the floor. This will be his kicking foot. When he's ready, he will lift and pull up on this foot while balancing on his back hand and kicking foot. When he's ready, he'll lift up and kick the ball, come back down and land without any part of his bottom touching the floor. At the same time, lifting, kicking, and landing. When he lands, he must keep his balance. He can also hop around after he lands. After each successful round, the ball is raised approximately four inches at a time. Every My time the ball is raised, the athlete sure gets three tries. Again, he's frozen. going to hang on to that foot the entire time. Lift, Miles is frozen. kick the ball, and land. Yep, his is frozen too. That's why we have Kyle. 
<laughs> That's interesting. It was giving me a, it wasn't giving me the option to optimize for video. Um, I made sure not to have too many things open. I can try again. Maintaining his balance. There are three different hand positions, flat palmed, up on your fingers and thumbs, or on your fist. Not only is Andrew pulling up on the foot he is holding onto, he is also kicking that foot up. He uses it to help him balance as he goes into a vertical position, always keeping his eyes on the target until he hits it. After kicking the target, he must land on the same side he takes off from. The Alaskan high kick requires a lot of body control. Here are some of the things you should avoid. Kicking past the vertical position, letting go of the foot, and landing behind the hand. The Alaskan high kick is a game that was played inside the native people's small houses and huts. Because this game takes up very little room, it was a great way to stay in shape and to see who could leave their footprint on the highest part of the inside of the hut. Interesting. Um, did it work just fine for that when I didn't expand it? It worked for me. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, hopefully. Can you guys still see it when I expand it? Did it pause again? Yeah. This event is the Alaskan high kick. Harry is going to start yeah, by pause. sitting on the floor, not getting a. Looks like I'm back. It kicked me out. Apologies. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Now I have an optimized for video clip. <clears throat> I wonder if I need to do an update. Um, can everyone see this? If I'm changing it? Okay, I'm not going to expand it and we're going to go ahead and... This event is the Alaskan High Kick. Harry is going to start by sitting on the floor, not too far away, not too close. He's going to place one hand behind him on the floor, flat palmed, fingers facing away. His other hand is going to reach across and grab his opposite foot, any part of his foot, top, bottom, toes, any part of his foot. From here, he's going to push off the floor with the foot he's going to kick with. Down here, he's going to use this foot to help him by lifting up and kicking that foot up. He kicks the ball, lands, maintains his balance on his foot and hand without any other part of his body touching the floor. After he successfully kicks the ball, we raise the ball four inches higher. That's the Alaskan high kick. Okay, we can move into our demonstrations. Uh, who would like me to spotlight them first, Nicole or Kyle? I'm sure it's Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> and it's I Kyle. believe Kyle, if you need, I have <clears throat> multiple participants can share, but. Go ahead. Um, I'll just quickly demonstrate and go over some of the things I I do when I coach you. Um, so we're doing junior NYO. Usually you're starting lower than this, about maybe knee knee height for the kids or so. Um, and sometimes it helps to walk them through the steps to get in position by leaning on their hands, having both legs out. And then I'll say, bring one leg in. Whichever leg is straight, that's the hand you bring forward, put it on your knee, next grab your foot, and then from here, pull in your leg, and then position yourself facing the ball, foot pointed towards the ball, and then from here. Sometimes it's easier for younger kids to first learn to start off the floor. Um, 
especially when working with younger kids, they don't get the idea of lifting their bottom off the floor right away and they'll just try to kick without lifting the bottom. So you can start by teaching it with their bottom lifted, pop, land back on their foot, keeping that balance. Um, it is a better technique to start from the floor, but oftentimes younger kids that are still trying to figure it out, it's easier to teach them lifted off the floor so they get that concept of having their bottom off the floor. Um, as they start learning the basic um, routine of doing it, you want to emphasize the foot that they're holding, that they can pull that foot up. And it's kind of like you're popping that leg up. It helps pop your hips up to get more height. On landing, um, letting them know they don't have to land real rigid and hold their landing, but a, uh, a kick, you can hop on that landing as much as you need to catch your balance. They're not supposed to rotate on their hand though. Okay, yeah, don't, don't rotate then. I rotated in that example. Um, okay, so I'll do it again and I'll hop without rotating the hand. So the hand stayed there. Um, as the ball gets higher, it's, it's really about emphasizing lifting their hips. So I'll give you two kicks here. Here's one kick without, I'm gonna have my hips almost just levitate in place without going up. And you'll see, I, can't, I can only reach so high. So if you watch that example, if you're seeing your athlete do that, if you're seeing their athlete, they're not moving their hips. Okay, here's one, popping the hips up. So try to watch for that in the kids that they're consciously thinking about lifting those hips, thrusting the hips up. Uh, even take a video, sometimes that helps. The kids can analyze their own form. Sometimes they don't realize what they're doing on their kicks. Um, we sometimes, once they max out, let's say a kid maxes out at this height, in order just to practice lifting the hips, we'll, we call this a practice kick where you launch the body without holding your foot. And that's a technique that um, we use with more of our older athletes to try to practice bringing the hips up and approaching a vertical form. Um, another thing you could do with kids if they're, if you have a mat, Without the ball, they can just practice hopping on the back. So right next to it. And then if you have more mats, you can kind of keep building the height up. No, it doesn't look like it, but Kyle is actually pulling on that foot that he's holding on to. It's more rigid, more of a rigid pull to help get his hips up. And when we're um, practicing and starting off with the kids, one of the things that I like to do is in that position is really exaggerate by pulling that foot up because that also pulls the hips up, up to, yeah, up like that. And the, um... Any other questions on Alaskan high kick? I'm going to go ahead and try one more height. Just see if I can still do it. <laughs> Are you, have you started practices yet, Kyle? We start this Thursday. So we've had like a month and a half off. Oh, OK. Um, let's see if we can do this. Nice. If they start going that high, there's the other rule of trying to land on the same side they take off from that 180 degree. So if I'm taking off here, my wrist 
this is the area I have to land without arching over. I don't know if you've ever had a JNYO athlete go vertical. Um, almost. Um, what's his name from Kenai? Michael. Okay. Is it Mackay or McKee? Mackay, yeah, Mackay. Yeah. I was going to say, we don't have that problem where I'm at, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Anything else you guys want to add or questions about Alaskan high kick? Karen, maybe your youth has a question or anything for Kyle or Nicole? <laughs> She wasn't planning on doing the high kick. She she wants to do the kneel jump this year, which is new for her. Awesome. All right. That's cool. Well, we'll be covering that next. Okay. Let us know if you have any questions. Okay. All right. Move on to kneel jump. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys the kneel jump video. I'm not going to expand it again just so that we don't get disconnected. Um, but here we go. I'm also going to actually first stop spotlighting you. If I can, I know I can figure this out. Right. I took off the spotlight. Oh, I was going to say it's gone. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> This event is called the kneel jump. Andrew will start by kneeling on the floor with the tops of his feet flat. You are not allowed to use your toes like this. They must be flat. From this position, Andrew will swing his arms or his upper body up and down, or he can take off right from a seated position like this. From here, the object is to jump as far forward as you can, landing on both feet, sticking your landing and maintaining your balance. Andrew will now do his first jump. When he lands, we'll measure the distance from the heel that is closest to the start line. Andrew gets three attempts to go as far as he can. The athlete who jumps the furthest distance wins this event. Here's a closer look at the kneel jump. It is okay for the knees to come up off the floor before they jump. You want to swing your arms back, Explode forward until your body is straight. Pull your knees up and throw your heels forward, sticking your landing. Here's another look at the kneel jump in real time. The kneel jump was played to develop the skills hunters needed for jumping up quickly off of ice or from the ground in the event they needed to get away from another animal that snuck up behind them. And I know um, it's kind of similar to the videos that we're showing, but uh, we go ahead and show the senior version and the um, JNYO version just because the looks may be, uh, the, the performance may look a little bit different, um, you know, depending on, on the level of. Gives a little more accurate depiction of junior athletes. Yes. <laughs> This is the kneel jump. Harry's gonna start by kneeling on the floor behind a line. The tops of his feet are flat. You'll notice he is barefoot. This gives the athlete a better grip on the floor. They can also wear shoes and socks or mucklucks. From this position, Harry's gonna swing his arms back and forth to help him jump as far forward as he can, landing on both feet at the same time and maintaining his balance. This is the kneel jump. After he jumps, we'll measure from the heel that is closest to the start line to the nearest quarter inch. Harry jumped 18 inches. That is the nail jump.
So that is our Neil Jum. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spotlight you there, Kyle, and await your demonstration. Um, so this is a game that's supposed to, well, I think the best flooring is a, a, a nice glossy gym floor, um, but you could do it on any floor. I probably wouldn't recommend doing it on carpet because you get carpet burn. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this blue mat, which is Sometimes we practice on this mat because you can get really good grip. Um, but uh, usually any gym floor works. <clears throat> um, so in the beginning, it's, it's good just to teach them how to jump to their feet, swinging their arms, using their core muscles to tuck their legs in. Learning how to jump to the, their feet is the first step. Um, if you're wanting to go for distance, the best advice um, is to take off your shoes and socks because your bare foot is going to get a uh, better grip on the mat. So in this position, there's a line kneeling behind the line. My feet are flat. And to test my grip, I can push back and I'm not sliding. I'm using the tops of my feet here as grip to push, propel my body forward. So I'm gonna do, not a, too big of a jump, but swinging the arms, landing in that squat and a deep squat, a wide deep squat is gonna help maintain the balance. So again, bare feet, pushing on the ground, testing my grip. I, I can feel the grip, so I'm ready to jump. Swinging the arms. I'm gonna to try to swing with full extension. So as I jump, I'm gonna reach forward and extend the entire body until I'm, what I'm supposed to look like in the air. Straight out, pushing with the tops of my feet. That's where your, most of your power is gonna come from. Land in that deep squat, could be wide. Um, some things you'll see some athletes do is push off from their knees like this. Oh, kind of hard for me to do that. Um, you're not gonna get as much power, forward power, if you're trying to push down on your knees here as you're jumping. Your power should be coming from the tops of your feet. So. And when Kyle is extending, after he extends, he tucks his, pulls his knees in and then throws his heels out forward. Mm -hmm. Kneel jump. Um, let me show you, I got a couple pictures here in my Google Slides if can help demonstrate. Can you see the slides or loading? Um, we already went over the rules, but this picture here on the right, this person is in full extension. You see how his feet are the last thing to leave the floor versus the next um, athlete here. I can tell this athlete pushed off his knees. And so he's not getting as much forward, forward momentum as this first athlete here that used full extension. And then this is a picture of Andrew from the video we just watched. See that full extension? It's like a line running from the toes all the way to the hands. That's what we call full extension. Some people call it like supermaning in the air. Um, and that's going to give you that 45 degree angle because you're trying to Give yourself both forward momentum and upward momentum. 45 is the perfect angle. If you're too greater than 45, you're, you're giving yourself too much upward momentum. If you're lower than 45, you're gonna, your feet are going to hit the floor before you, before you can land. The picture in the bottom left corner is a really good example. This is looks like it's in Bethel, but you can see, look at how deep of a squat he landed in with his legs at his side. Um, so you'll, you'll see athletes land that way. It, it's, um, 
a good way to catch your landing and it allows you to reach further forward if you land with a wide grip. Any questions on those techniques? And when they're landing like that, they're really throwing their heels out in front. It mm -hmm. allows them to land really low like that. So the it's good to practice on different surfaces. This blue mat is super grippy and it also, it doesn't um, hurt as much as doing <laughs> on a tile floor. Um, but you should definitely practice with both a hard surface and on this soft surface. You don't want to get overconfident on this surface because it, it will allow you to jump further and it's less painful. Part of the game is that pain endurance too. So if you're practicing on a blue mat, make sure you also try it directly on the wood floor because that's how they do it in the competitions. One of the things that I do is um, with their shoes and socks on, if you're at a home or you have carpet, it's to do it on the carpet with your shoes and socks on because you do get a pretty good grip. And then once you've kind of warmed up and you've done some, have done some good jumps, then I'll just have them do, take their shoes and socks off and then practice um, actually on the surface that they would be competing on because they're warmed up and um, we don't want them to tear the tops of their feet after doing too many jumps. And correct me if I'm wrong, recording purpose or submission purposes, uh, Nicole, you, we don't recommend that they, final submissions are, are on gym mats, right? We want them on hard floor? If they have a hardwood floor available, yes. Okay. But, uh, yes. Do, do we have any issues with gym mats um, being their floor for submissions though? That's had someone. Yeah, that's last year we asked them not to do that. It, okay. If they have a gym floor or they have a kitchen floor or they have a even a tile floor, just a hard hard floor, um, then they need to be using that. And that's what's preferred. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, I'll I'll show you one other technique is um, to teach the kids to reach their feet out on that jump is you could put a line on the floor. So I'm going to use this piece of tape and I'm going to aim my heels at the piece of tape here. I'm going to put it right about here. So this visual cue is going to help me in the air as I jump. I'm going to try to reach my heels forward to land on this line. I think you can see it yeah, right here. So I didn't quite make it, but a, uh, a sign, it's always better to fall backwards because that's showing you're extending versus if you have a kid, they're falling forward and they're doing something like this, that means they put the brakes on too soon. They didn't lift their legs high enough and they stopped their momentum. So their potential is a lot further, but they're stopping themselves, they're landing too soon. So if you see them falling forward, it's, it's a sign that they're, they're stopping their, their momentum. They could have gone much further. So always try to teach that extension. Falling backwards is usually a sign that they're, they're really extending themselves. So try one more time. And right, you'll jump. Great demonstrations, by the way. Thank you. As usual. Uh, any any questions for Neil Jump? Do you have any videos of the um, oh. taping? The, yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> the proper way to to uh, videotape the or video the competition for the Alaskan high kick and the Neil Jump, we will show Adele will show here. I have a question about the knees. 
right before we start, we always put that clipboard or something down just to make sure the knees are behind the line. When they start rocking back and forth, is it okay for the knees to cross over that line? Okay. No, it is not. If we can catch them in competition, we'll stop them and tell them that they don't. The other thing that they're doing too when they're when they're swinging so hard that they're moving forward is they're losing that grip on the floor. Have you tried rocking? Hmm? Or are you not used to rocking? Um, it's okay. I don't do it. 21 inches. So you can see the entire view and then moved into the taping and then watch and then zoomed in onto the measurement. Oh, Any no. questions? And it's right. three attempts, and you guys just want the video of the best jump. Yep, their furthest jump. Got it. And we have the Alaskan high kick, too. Or one hand reach. In vertical form. Yeah, it should be horizontal. If you have any questions in the time being, please ask them. I'm going to find the correct video. I'm not too sure what happened here. <laughs> I did have it pulled up. Let's see. There's a lot of playlists. You'll see when Kyle was doing the nail jump that he doesn't swing his arms back and forth. Because a lot of times what that does do is it breaks the traction off of the floor. And um, we don't go up and down. I don't teach that anymore. The up and down, I teach right, taking off right from the heels. <clears throat> Some of the kids start up, go up and down like that, which is fine. But we have discovered that taking off right from the heels gives us the best results. Sorry, I'm trying to look for our Alaskan high kick folder. Oh, I think I found it. And here is where I should have Ezra's. Not too sure how it appeared on me. There he is. I found him. The sure. Oops, what happened? Oh, it wasn't showing me that I was sharing. I apologize. Should be sharing now. Okay. Hmm? So one of the things that we noticed last year with some of the um, videos that were submitted, they measured first 
and then they didn't kick it until their third attempt. So we had to watch through all of that video um, because of the measurement. So I highly suggest that you measure after the attempts, after the last successful uh, attempt. Or measure before every attempt, that would probably solve that too. Yes. I always, I always have my kids measure before because after they kick it, I found the measurement changes just because of the tightness of our string. Yeah. And so we always measure beforehand. Um, that, that's, that's fine too. Yep. Great, great advice there, Bill. Um, but if you do get a chance to be able to show a measurement after a successful kick, uh, it, it's very helpful to include that in the, in the after, because I can see how the measurement can change once it kick, once, once they kick. Yeah. It might loosen the string might loosen or mm -hmm. pop off or something. So yeah, measuring before is, is a good idea. Now, since we're not in a competition in person, they are still supposed to go up every, the four inch, every four inches, right? Yeah. We, we saw that score sheet yesterday. So we're still going yeah. every four inches until at some point we break down to two inches. Yeah. I kind of, I want to give everybody a little bit more of an opportunity to advance. So I kind of cut down that two inch before you would have technically gotten to like the top five kids at okay. state. So um, it's hard to guess for the first and second graders for the kicking events and then kind of have an idea just from working with some of the kids in the schools, how high they might be able to go for the third and fourth graders for all the kicks. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's been very different opening this up in PE and after school to kids that don't compete in this normally. Go, oh yeah. We are not starting there and then we can't do this 36 and 48 inches stuff on those one foot. We got to go way low. So, all yeah. right. Sounds good. Awesome. Any more questions for anybody else? Any re Redemonstrations that you need? <laughs> a little more clarification on anything? Okay. I'm glad to see that, Karen, you had uh, a youth with you. It's always nice seeing their faces. Um, hope she's got everything she needs to be able to move forward with it. Well, awesome, everybody. Thank you for attending our little training session. We hope that we uh, inspired your you and your athletes to jump higher and further and anything that we can do to make it more fun is um that's why we're here and nicole thank you for putting those videos together for the nyo every one of my students in my school have watched every single one of those videos during this month and so we got fun. we got another grant to do a little bit more in-depth um videos and we're going to be using younger kids perfect because I show them that I show them that uh, Alaskan high kick and I go, this is exactly what it's not going to look like when we do it, guys. <laughs> and so, yeah, if we could do something like that, that'd be super. Yeah, we're just giving we want to do some videos that are made more for elementary to middle school kids. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah, we miss you, Kyle. We miss you so much here in Anchorage. <laughs> yeah, I miss the NYO community in Anchorage. I, I, my big resource, Kyle, come to my school and help me. He's gone. <laughs> well, I can I come to your school. Fine. I just don't have demonstrators. I mean, I can do, oh, I, I did know. one foot high kick almost four feet yesterday. I meant to ask you how you're <laughs> feeling today. Actually, I feel a lot better than I thought I was going to. So I'm pretty happy about that. I hurt my knee doing an Indian stick pull today. And I have no idea because there's no twisting involved. Something <laughs> popped in my knee and I was done. Uh, you rotated just right. <laughs> I was done. Oh, that's too funny. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, and thank you, you, everybody, for, for spending the evening with us. Yes. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, um, if you have questions, you can text text oh. me. And um, let's see. We had our our Karen. Were you in last night's meeting, Karen? I don't believe so. Okay, I'm going to put, I'll put my cell phone number up. In the chat? No, I missed chat. last night's meeting. Oh, yeah, because she had. So my cell phone number is going up into the chat 
right now. So if you have questions, you can text me.